Back in 1983, these furry creatures called Ewoks got thrown into the world of Star Wars. They appeared cute, harmless, and talked in a funny manner, but as we all know, looks can deceive you. My mistake. The Ewoks were kind of brutal, as shown when they planned to burn our heroes alive, even more so in their unexpected victory over the Empire. Yet uh, George Lucas failed to make their ruthless nature believable, a shortcoming that to this day is one of the most discussed topics within the Star Wars community. In essence, I'm talking about how one event in Return of the Jedi contributed significantly to the perception of the movie as deeply flawed, and more importantly, how the effects of the Ewoks sparked the never-ending cycle of something much more consequential. Somewhere in space, this may all be happening right now. Star Wars. It's safe to say that George Lucas, from a writing perspective, faced a great challenge in wrapping up this movie trilogy. With the need to save Han Solo, show Luke's journey to becoming a Jedi, explore the complex Skywalker family dynamics, and bring about the fall of the Empire, it seemed nearly impossible to cover all of this in approximately two and a half hours of screen time. Additionally, episode 4 and 5 were also over overall very well received, in turn creating sky-high expectations that in reality were unreasonable. A New Hope was the beginning of a revolutionary era within Hollywood, and would therefore always be iconic as well as remembered, while The Empire Strikes Back, even in modern times, is regarded as one of the best sequels and movies to ever exist. In retrospect, it was two juggernauts in film history going up against the trilogy's final installment. Calling it a difficult undertaking is almost an understatement, and the Ewoks certainly didn't make it any easier. <laughs> The amount of unique and weird characters in Star Wars is too many to count. It's an integral part, illustrating a necessary diversity in a huge universe filled with a rich amount of different languages, looks, and behaviors. The Ewoks were no different, and I think they fit into this imaginary world just as well as any other creature. They were silly, some would call them dumb, preaching C-3PO as a god and so on, but Star Wars has always been experienced through a whimsy and exaggerated lens. Just look at our heroes some minutes earlier falling for an obvious trap. Great, Chewie. Uh -huh. Great. Always thinking with your stomach. I have always seen this chaotic sequence with the Ewoks when they almost kill everyone and then suddenly become cute teddy bears again as a fun part of the movie. Though I do understand that it's not really moving the story forward other than creating some sort of bond between what would later be the small company facing the Empire. This is where the arguments against them begins to appear, because even if they moments earlier outsmarted the heroes, they are, for the most part, portrayed as helpless characters. For instance, not being any kind of real threat against Princess Leia, Cut it out. while also acting real spooked by the story 3PO is telling. From one point of view, I do understand where the fans are coming from when they passionately dispute questions like how they could defeat the Empire, but from another, it's kind of silly to me, just like the characters themselves. It's a classic story to have the heroes beat the evil enemies at their home ground. It's been seen everywhere, in all types of contexts. The fact is that the Empire, despite being more advanced, was simply outnumbered, and could be outsmarted because they didn't know the territory. It's a message with the center of attention on the unity against an evil force, rather than focusing on who makes up that united force, which to some seems totally ludicrous. At the same time, arguing 
talking about the details like this is kind of a pointless in a universe like Star Wars, because as I have mentioned previously, everything is already looked upon as ridiculous. Of course, the story decisions have to be made in consideration to the quote-unquote rules of that specific made-up world, otherwise everything descends into chaos where nothing can be taken seriously. I can attempt to wipe her memory. And in the case of the Ewoks, these rules are not being disregarded, at least not in my opinion. The key point here is that in a world where stormtroopers can't hit anything, where lightsabers can rotate and make you take to the air like a helicopter, and where a kid could fly into a heavily guarded space station, destroy it, and come out without a scratch, you're telling me that some cute but fierce teddy bears can't overcome the Empire on their own planet. The argument is as absurd as what's happening on screen, and in a very ironic way it represents what has been going on in Star Wars since forever. It highlights why the fanbase is often viewed with such stigma, and sometimes even laughed at. Because, and I'm of course not saying that everyone is part of it, it feels like the fans view their own love for the franchise through a totally unrealistic perspective. And in this context, the Ewoks became a scapegoat for an entire film, when in reality the movie has many flaws, most of which stem from it being too short, while it simultaneously has some brilliant moments that deserves all the praise in the world. Could these adorable creatures have been characterized in a more believable way? Sure, probably by making them a bit more clever, but mainly larger, which as I have seen online was actually considered. I think they were even originally intended to be Wookiees at one point, which would have made the battle sequence a lot more complex convincing. On the topic of different planets and people, the bond between locals and our heroes is something that has gotten explored more and more in later years. For example, in Book of Boba Fett with the Sand People, creatures has also become much more of an active part of stories with the Purgil and Ahsoka and Star Wars Rebels or Batcher in the Bad Batch. In the original trilogy, most of the beings, animals or whatever you call them were seen as threats rather than allies. The Tusken Raiders, the Exogorph, the Wampa, the Rancor, and the Sarlacc Pit, to name a few. The Ewoks changed this and joined the quote unquote good side, which could be yet another argument for why the fans didn't feel a connection to this decision, because it was something new. Nevertheless, the Ewoks paved the way for a future where it seemed impossible for fans not to give in to their hate. It feels like this franchise will never be able to get rid of this evil mark, and perhaps it has already gone too far. Yet, uh, one thing is certain. The Ewoks begun this complex and over-exaggerated journey of hostility and resentment. But when speaking the truth, the Ewoks had very little to do with it. Here you can watch another Star Wars video regarding Andor. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you will have a great day.